So, so two a to the fifth, b to the fourth, and then all raised to the third power. Wow, if you're really not watching, if you're really not paying attention, if you're really not sticking with this problem, it's going to be kind of difficult, right? Because there's lots happening. There's lots happening. But you guys can master it. You guys can get this. Is 2a to the fifth power like one thing? No. Nope. Remember, this, this, this is very similar to this. This is like three times b. This is like two times a to the fifth times b to the fourth. So my question to you first is, how many factors do I have inside of my parentheses? One, three, two, or three? Three. 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 Got three. three. That means three things are going to be raised to the third power, third power in this case. You ready for it? Yeah. So what's the first thing, do you think? Two Take care of the two. Two, two to the third. 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 All right. Good. Good. Now, wait a second. What about a to the fifth? We're going to multiply the exponents. Wait, well, explain that. Why, why do we have to multiply the exponents? She's right. Why do we have to multiply the exponents? Do you see how we're combining two rules here? Yeah. We combine two things. We're going to get a to the 15 because we're going to multiply the 5 times the 3. That's an exponent being raised to exponent. So notice you're taking the 2 to the 3rd, a to the 5th to the 3rd, b to the 4th to the 3rd. So you're going to get b to the what? 12. Now, do you have to have the multiplication signs? No, you don't. It's implied if you stick everything next to each other that's being multiplied. Now, one, one great question I always have people ask is, well, wait a second, Mr. Leonard. Why is it that you multiply these numbers, but you don't multiply the 3 times the 2? Why is this going to be an 8 and not a 6? Here's the thing. You've actually been doing this the whole entire time with these problems. Check it out. Please watch carefully on this. When we, when we did this, when we did this, this is actually 3 to the first power, isn't it? Right. Right? Yeah. And this is actually b to the first power. Are you with me on that? Yes. Focus up here. When you take an exponent <coughs> to an exponent, you multiply, true? Yeah. So what we did is 3 to the first to the fourth, well, 1 times 4, that's how we got 3 to the fourth. b to the first to the fourth, well, 1 times 4, that's how we got the 4 there. So it, it is the same thing. It's only we have special cases where we only had exponents of 1. When we don't, we have different exponents. True, that, that 2 is still to the first power. Everything has an exponent. If it's not written, it's simply a 1. Are you with me on that? Simply a 1. So here, we're going to take our 2 to the first, 2 to the third. 1 times 3, that gives us 3. So are we multiplying? Yes, we are, but it's inherent in the exponents. That takes care of it for you. You don't have to worry about anything else. It's going to do it for you. So 1 times 3 gives you 2 to the third. The 5 times 3 gives you the 15. The 4 times 3 gives you the 12. That's a real important thing. I need to know how many people feel OK with it. All right. Now let's start simplifying some stuff. Anything that has a number to an exponent, we can do that. So what's 2 to the third? Eight. Good. Don't give me 6. Don't just multiply. I know that's easy to do when you're in the heat of a test. And you're like, well, i got to do this quick. Give me 6. Well, no. Think carefully. We're doing 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. And that's our final answer. Very cool. Try one on your own. Four x squared y to the sixth, all raised to the third, third power. Now, in the next example, we're going to tie everything in this section together with just one example. Were you able to get this one already? So we have how many things in, inside there? Three. Okay. Three factors. That's three things being multiplied by, by themselves. So we're going to do, remember, this is like 4 to the first power. So since it's 4 to the first, that's where we're going to get the 4 to the third, because 1 times 3 gives you the 3. That's where that 4 to the third comes from. It's not magic, right? We're not just putting it up there. We're actually multiplying those exponents times each, each other. Also, we have x to the how much? Six. Not fifth? We're not adding, nope. we're actually multiplying. That's 
Oh yeah. Got my back. Thanks. Y to the what's it? Eighteen. Eighteen. Nice show of hands. How many people made it that far? Good for you. That's good. All right. So four to the third. Yes. X to the sixth because you're multiplying exponents. Y to the eighteenth because you're multiplying exponents. That gives you sixty-four. X to the sixth. And there's nothing else you can do about that. That's it. As far as you can go. You can't start combining anything else. Yet you don't have like bases. Can you do that problem? Yeah. Okay. Don't do it now. Can you do that problem? Well, if you can do this problem and you can do this problem, then you should be able to do both of them and do the whole thing because now we have everything to do it. This combines all of our properties together. This is it. This is the type of problem you can expect on your test. Okay, so are you going to make a note on that? Test problem right there. If you can do that, easy 10 points. Well, let's see about it. We'll, we'll do one together. I'll give you one to do on your own. So this will be the together. So first thing, ladies and gentlemen, can you tell me what this part is going to give us? This piece right there. How much? 27 Okay. You're right on the 27. I'm going to write it as 3 cubed for right now just to show where that's coming from. Uh, X2, oh, sorry, Y2 the what? 12. Good, because we have exponent times exponent. So exponent raised to exponent, we multiply it. And then B to the? Six. Good. So we're, we're carefully doing those, raising exponents, exponents by multiplication. So far, so good? Yeah. What's it mean when parentheses are next to each other? You've got to multiply. So this means I've got a multiplication, and I've got to figure that out. i got 2, y to the 3rd, b to the 5th, and all raised to the 5th power. Keep it coming. What, what do I get next? 2 to the 5th. Very good. 2 to the 5th. You see where 2 to the 5th is, is coming from, yeah? yeah? Y to the? 15. B to the? That's using this property that we just did. We're, we've just taken care of those parentheses. You're going to notice it's very similar to order of, order of operations. We've just done parentheses. That meant our exponents. We've got it now. Now the only thing that's left is deal with these exponents, our numbers that we can do. These ones we can't do anything about, but the numbers we can. You all said that 3 cubed was how much? 27. 27. Very good. So 27. Why did the 12th be the 6th time? Oh, how about 2 to the 5th? 10? How much? Good. Yeah, don't go quickly. Don't give me 10. We're not multiplying here. We're, all, we're, we're raising it to a power. Why do we have 32? Two, two times two, times two, times two, times two. That's 32. So we're going to get 4, 8, 16, 32. That's where we get that. Your calculator will do that too. Hey, can you continue? Can you finish that off? Yes. yes. These are all being multiplied here. We have two numbers, 27 and 32. Can you multiply those? Yes. yes. Sure, do it on your calculator. What do you get? Eight, four. Awesome, got it. Do we have any other common bases being multiplied? Yes. yes. Y, 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 y. That's y to the? 27. B to the? 31. I'm going to stop you right here to show you a very important piece of information. Please watch up here on the board, because some people, when you're first learning this, get these two concepts confused. Please look carefully at this example. If I give you 3x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus y uh, minus 2x to the fourth minus x squared plus 3y. Okay. <laughs> Can you combine like terms? Yeah. Yes. Don't forget how to do that. Okay? Don't forget how to combine like terms. When you combine like terms, you need to clear up these, these properties in your head. When you combine like terms, that's going to give you x to the, this is, this is it, this is it. This is what I'm trying to clear up for you. Don't forget how to combine like terms. If you're combining like terms, do you change the power? No. That's x to the fourth still. It's like this. If you have 2x plus 3x, 
That's two x's plus three x's, you get five x's, right? Yes. When's the only time you change powers? When you multiply. If you're adding or subtracting, you're gonna change the powers. No, so you're gonna to have to really focus on that. I know it's new, and, and we're, we're jamming everything together in this section. It's everything you've learned. So notice that when combined like terms, you're still gonna get x to the fourth there, because you're adding and subtracting those, those, the amounts of the x to the fourth that you have. You got three of them here, you're subtracting two of them, you got one of them. One x to the fourth, not to the eighth. Notice we're not, we're not multiplying those things, right? So you don't have to add those exponents. Here, we added the exponents. Why? Because we're not adding, we are multiplying those things. Do you see the difference here, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. That's why I gotta show you that, because on the test, you, these problems are gonna be very close to one another. I can't have you doing this stuff for this problem and this stuff for that problem. Let's, let's continue just a little bit and then I'll, I'll get to your question. Uh, are there any other like terms? Oh, yeah. Okay, so 2x squared minus x squared, you're going to get how much? Plus x squared. Not x to the fourth? No. You have a 2x squared minus 1x squared, you get x squared. Lastly, I've got a y and a 3y. Do plus I get 3y, 4y, 4y squared? Plus 4y. Plus 4y. So it all comes down to this. Are you going to add or change exponents whatsoever when you're combining like terms? No. 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 Are you going to do it when you're multiplying basis? Yes. Yeah, that's where it happens. Uh, do one example for me and then I'll let you go. This is both answers as far as you can go. Are these like terms? then you can't combine them. So could you, th this is where people get very confused, all right? Th they see the difference between why can I multiply these? Because these are different, right? That's got a 12 and a 15. Why? Because you're multiplying. Here, can you add those? No, because you're adding. It's a different operation. Multiplication, you can multiply darn near everything you want to, right? Addition, combined like terms, they have to look exactly the same. Let me write the problem on the board so you guys can start and I'll answer your question here real quick. So two, x squared y to the fourth there you go what about like if uh like in between of the parentheses in the middle I had uh add instead of multiplying oh that's a great question if this was this and this was this and this was this yeah that's where you'd stop There'd be nothing else you could do with that. Does that make sense to you? Yes. If I'm not multiplying, that's where I stop. This won't even exist. You could do anything with it because, hey, take a look at the board. You're real quick. No pause. Like There's no like terms. They're completely different. You, you wouldn't be able to combine those whatsoever. Does that answer your question? So multiplication is very different than combined like terms. No, because you don't have like terms. It'd be like trying to combine 2x and 3y. Can you get 5 of anything? No. no. Okay. Continue working on that one. We'll go over in a second. 